So this is, uh, this is an example of a public key um, crypto system. So I mean, the, uh, uh, the, the prime number P is the key here, um, the public key, and everyone sees it. But um, even knowing that that public key P, it, you, you can't easily uh, um, crack this code. Um, it is possible to crack the code with, with, with many, many tries. What you can do is you can try each possible G in turn and see whether, uh, and each possible A and B, and see whether um, they work. You just keep guessing. Um, and if you guess a huge number of times, uh, it will eventually work. But uh, if you have a 200-digit prime number, uh, you have just too much search, search space. Um, it's not practical to, uh, to crack this code. Um, and so we, in fact, believe that, uh, that these codes are, are secure for all practical purposes, that anyone with, with any reasonable amount of computer power, for example, the entire computer power of the internet, uh, should not be able to, to crack these codes. Uh, if you pick reasonable values, like 200-digit 200, 200 digit, uh, is, uh, is quite standard. Um, so it's believed, but it's not proven, uh, that these algorithms are secure. This is related, by the way, to a very famous problem in mathematics uh, called the P equals NP problem, which I'll not talk about. It's, it's a great problem. Um, but it, it's, uh, it's, so the, uh, I just mentioned that the Clay Mathematical Institute uh, has famously offered uh, uh, seven um, millennium challenge problems uh, in mathematics, each one of which, if you win, you, it's worth a million dollars. There's seven problems, uh, one is solved, six are open, um, and one of them is the P equals NP problem. Okay. But we have some partial results, so I'll just give one example of the results. So, um, so the eavesdropper so doesn't see G in this data, but uh, the eavesdropper does see some, some other data. Uh, the eavesdropper will see G to the A, G to the B, G to the AB, uh, mod P. Uh, so it receives some data. Um, and in principle, if you have enough computer power, uh, this data could be used to re reconstruct G. But uh, it was shown, though, that, uh, that the data that, that is received by this, by this protocol is uh, what's called uni uniformly distributed, uh, which is a technical term. But what it means is that if you look at the, um, roughly, if you look at the, at the most significant bits of, these, of, these, um, of this data, um, they're distributed just like random noise. And there's no way you can reconstruct information from random noise. If you apply any algorithm to random noise, you just get more random noise. So um, that's, that's, that means that if you only see the most significant bits of, of this data, you cannot reconstruct the, the, the to say anything about the original, um, um, uh, the, the original seed, the original data. Um, that's not a complete proof of security because the least significant bits could be used to, to reconstruct G, but it, it's, it's evidence <coughs> towards uh, uh, information um, security of this algorithm. And that was proven quite recently. Okay, so as I said, we believe in many ways that the primes behave randomly. Um, one piece of evidence for this is that, is that we have no good formula for the nth prime. As I said, the, the, uh, the, nth, the nth square number is n squared. Um, you know, we have always formulas for many other things, but we don't have a good formula for the nth prime. Um, no exact formula. Um, but strangely enough, we do have something almost as good in many ways. We have an approximate formula, which is um, for the nth prime, that uh, the nth prime is actually um, approximately equal to n times the natural log of n, uh, when n is large. So the, 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 more, the more, more precise statement is if you take the nth prime and you divide it by n to log n, uh, this will actually converge to one as n goes to infinity. That's the precise statement. Uh, and this is a very famous result in uh, number theory. It's got the prime number theorem, uh, proven in 1896. Um, the graphic in the background, so uh, the dotted line at the top, uh, so okay, the, the horizontal axis is n, and the vertical axis is the nth prime. So this is 1,000, the nth prime is something like 7,000 something. Um, and the, the, uh, the, the dotted line at the top is, is the graph of the nth prime. And the solid line at the bottom, oopsie, is the, um, is the graph of n log n. And so you can see that there's a reasonably close fit between them. Uh, and as, 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 you, as uh, you increase to infinity, the, uh, the, the fit actually gets, gets better, at least uh, proportionally to n. Um, okay. There is a famous conjecture, uh, another one of the Clay Price problems, actually, another one of the million do um, dollar problems called the Riemann hypothesis, uh, if, which I won't state precisely here, but if this hypothesis is true, then there is an even more, uh, there's an even more precise form of the n log n, which is a bit technical to write here, but it's, it should be much more precise. And that's, that's given by this dashed line, which you can't re really see very well because it's lying very close to the actual prime numbers. It, it, um, you probably can't see it with this resolution, but there, there's actually a, a, dot, a dashed line which is tracking the primes very, very closely, and that's the, the, the line predicted by the Riemann hypothesis. It's, it's, it looks extremely accurate, and everyone believes by, for many reasons, including overwhelming numerical evidence, that the Riemann hypothesis is true, but it is still open. 
I mean, there's been a lot of work on the problem, but uh, not, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not been proved. So um, I want to tell you about the, the proof of the prime number theorem. Um, so uh, mathematics has advanced a bit since the days of Euclid, and our, our, the proof techniques have become much more high-tech. Um, so I just, uh, um, so I, no way I can give you the entire proof. I, so I gave you the entire proof of Euclid's in one page. There's no way I can do that for the prime number theorem. But I just want to give you a taste of, of the proof just to sort of indicate how much mathematics has advanced between Euclid and, and uh, 1896, at least. Um, because it's a it's a much more modern proof, um, and it's 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 one of the, it's it's a major landmark in number theory. So uh, roughly speaking, the proof goes like this: What you do is that you look at the primes. Um, you think of them as a wave, as a sort of a, sort of a sound wave. Um, I mean, technically, just think of it as a function um, that as a function of time. And when when time is prime, you make uh, you make the function large. You, you make a, you make a sound, and when, when the, when, when the prime number, time is not prime, you're quiet. So it's like if time one, you're quiet. Time two, you make a sound. Time three, you make a sound. Four, is quiet. Five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and so forth. Okay, and you get some sound wave. Okay, uh, and there's a certain special, uh, yeah, and the amplitude of this wave, there's a special formula. Okay, and you, you actually use something called the von Mangold function. Okay, so you take the sound wave uh, and you analyze it. Uh, in some sense, you, you listen to it. Um, now, given a sound wave, you can analyze it, you can look at, listen to its frequencies. Uh, you, you can take a Fourier transform, and the picture on the back is actually, oopsie, um, is what you get when you take the Fourier transform of what I just, of, of uh, this von Mangold function. You can take a, um, a Fourier transform. Uh, actually, you don't quite take a Fourier transform. You take a variant, a, a close brother of a Fourier transform called the Mellon transform, but that's, uh, that's, that's a technical point. But you, you listen to it. Um, and much like you know, if your ear listens to a piece of music, a piece of music is, is some sound wave, but the, the, your ear, because of the, uh, the inner uh, ear structure, can, can detect uh, frequencies, it can detect notes in the music. And very similarly, there are notes, um, there are frequencies uh, in this, this sound wave that, that, that is capturing the primes. And, um, and so all the notes in this music, um, they actually have a name, uh, they're called the zeros of the Riemann zeta function. Um, and every note gives you is, is, is a certain oscillation in, in, the, um, uh, in the sound wave that captures the primes. Uh, this, this, this is famously called the music of the primes. That, uh, that uh, if you go back and you look at this, at this, um, at this wave here, uh, sorry, at, so uh, at, this, at this line here capturing the primes, uh, if you spectrally analyze it, there are sort of um, waves. Uh, you can't see them in, uh, at this resolution, but, but there, there are waves of certain frequencies embedded um, in, this, um, uh, in this pattern, you can only see them by Fourier analysis or, or complex analysis. Um, and every one of these is a note. And, um, okay, and uh, it comes from the zeta function. The, uh, um, this, by the way, is a graph. The picture in the background is the graph of actually the reciprocal of the zeta function. And so every, every spike here, uh, every spike you see here, like this one and this one, that's one of the zeros of the, of the zeta function. And um, yeah, so uh, there are all these notes each note gives you an, a certain oscillation in, in, in the primes. Um, and um, they could be all over the place, but um, it is possible to prove that certain notes do not exist. Um, again, you use an indirect proof um, like you do for Euclid's theorem, that, that there, are certain, there are certain bad notes which, if they existed, would cause huge visible fluctuations in the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the distribution of the primes, but you show that these notes do not exist. They do not occur. And because they do not occur, um, the prime distribution must be very regular. And you can use that uh, you, with some advanced mathematics, uh, either Fourier analysis or, or from complex analysis, the tool contour integration, and you prove the final number theorem.